Okay, in this video I'm going to cover what parallel mode is, its advantages and how to configure it on supported hardware. Let's first remind ourselves what a sort of regular single mode setup looks like. It's typically a single hybrid inverter and a battery storage system. Some systems have the solar inverter and the battery inverter separated, so you have two inverters, one battery stack. You're going to be limited to around 30 or 40 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage uh, if you have a single inverter. If you're on three phase and you're using the Pro range, you can actually have two battery stacks per single inverter. But for a normal residential user, you'll likely have a hybrid inverter, a battery pack, and like I say, you can scale that up to just over 32 kilowatt hours of storage if you're using the ECS 4800 series. You're also going to be limited on how much throughput the inverter can invert. So on a single phase, if you go for a 10.5 kilowatt K series, that's about as big as it gets single phase. If you're three phase, they go up to 30 kilowatts worth of inversion support. Uh, having a single inverter, some of the other uh, limiting factors will be your emergency power supply output. So that will typically be limited to far less than what the inverter typically outputs. Uh, especially if you've got a, say, a 5 kilowatt inverter, you may only be seeing 20 amps of backup power supply. Ideal for critical loads, but you are limited. So when you get to the point where you've maxed out your batteries, you've filled up that ECS stack or that... Uh, HV2600 or Myra battery stack, you've got as many batteries as your inverter supports and you want more storage on top of that, what are your options? That's really what this video is about uh, and also digging into what parallel mode is. So that's just a quick reminder of what single mode is. Right, parallel mode. It, it gets loads of detail, we get stuck right into it. So you can scale with Fox using multiple inverters, up to 10 inverters, all connected in parallel. They scale, especially if you're on a three-phase supply, um, to over 300 kilowatt worth of concurrent demand through them. Uh, you can scale to over 800 kilowatt hours worth of storage, although if you're using single-phase uh, power for your regular household, it'll be somewhere around 300 kilowatt hours worth of storage. Still, that's... Um, if you're using between 12 and 15 kilowatt hours a day, like most average UK households, 300 kilowatt hours is going to feel uh, unrealistic and, and unneeded. But it's nice to have the hardware limits well above any possible restrictions that you'd, you'd actually need in your house. Um, very busy households, large properties, if you've got heat pumps, you could quite easily see... Uh, 60 70 kilowatt hours a day if you add to that uh, EV car EV cars EV chargers um, again most of it's going to either be in transport or heating you'll see the most energy demands for a household so being able to connect up to 10 inverters 10 battery stacks together in order to deliver all of that throughput in power but also uh, all of that energy storage Another advantage of uh, using parallel mode is that you only need one CT clamp or one meter. So each of the uh, slave inverters is actually using the meter data that's connected to the, the master inverter. The EPS loads are also combined in parallel mode. So you can, as you scale your inverters and you enable them in parallel mode, you can also merge those EPS loads as well, so you can power more off of that backup power supply. It's very easy to configure, we'll get into that and show you exactly what's involved, but beyond moving a few dip switches, connecting a cable and setting up uh, some values in the inverter screen, there's not a lot to it. So let's look at the example that we're going to talk about today. So I have my energy provider going down the grid to my smart meter where I have a CT clamp that is connected uh, to my, just after my smart meter, and that's powering my home. In addition, I have two K-series inverters connected using that Cat7 network cable and enabled in parallel mode with two battery storage setups. And I've also got a solar array. 
Now the number of inverters kind of is relevant, so you can see here I can add another inverter and another battery pack and it will all continue to work fine, all the way up to 10 inverters. But this is the high level overview of what it looks like when you're connecting inverters together. So how do we enable two or more inverters to talk to each other and to share that load? Well, on the K series, and I'm sure on the H1 Gen 2 inverter, we've got this panel labeled DRM Parallel 2 Parallel 1. These are actually grommets that allow a network cable to pass through that you can terminate. But when you remove this panel using the four screws in the corner, you see an area that looks a little bit like this. You can see for each of the labels, we have a corresponding RJ45 looking network port. So DRM is in the top left, parallel two, parallel one. These, these parallel ports are the ports that we're going to be using. We also notice that there's some dip switches just on the bottom left here. When you receive the inverter, it's covered in a, a little bit of um, yellow electrical tape just to keep the dip switches in position. So what you need to do is take off that electrical tape and move the dip switches on just the master inverter from the left position to the right position which is on. So you can see in these two pictures I've changed them from the left across to the right. So all four dips, dip switches are moved from left to right. And just to state that again you only change this on the master. You leave the slave inverters exactly as they are. You leave those dip switches set to the left. So once you've done that and you've moved those dip switches across to the right, great. Then you need to connect them together. So you'll notice that the CT clamp or meter will go into the normal meter plug that plugs in to this meter port. And then I'm going to be connecting parallel 2 to parallel 1 on the slave. So you can see I go from the top down to the bottom port. And if you add any additional inverters, so inverter 3, 4, 5, you do exactly the same. So you go from parallel 2 to parallel 1, parallel 2 to parallel 1, and you'd have that sort of overlapping type of uh, diagram. Uh, but only one of the inverters is connected to the CT or, or meter, and that is the master. So when all of that's done, you've connected your CT or or meter to the master's uh, COM port. You've done the network cabling. Fox specify CAT7 network cable. I'm sure that's just to reduce any chance of interference because these inverters are relying on that data connection for the to, to, to do load sensing, to understand how much power to output. So that's done. So I've done all the hard wiring and the physical bit by changing the switches, connecting them together. Then I need to go into the settings on the inverter and underneath settings you'll find a new option called parallel and you'll want the master inverter, inverter number one, to have an address of 001 and the enter number is the number of systems in parallel. So if you had three systems in parallel you'd set that to three, if you have two you'd set that to two, but that's the total number of systems kind of in this parallel cluster that you're setting up. In this case, we have two inverters, a master and a slave. So you can see on the left, I'm setting the address to 1. On the right, the slave is set to address 2, but they're both set to number 2. That's the software configured. Enter that on both of them. The inverters will restart and then try to connect to each other. When it comes to the wiring, what's really interesting is that all of the power uh, connections are all connected together. So the uh, main supply coming in, you can see this red and black line, they are actually connected to all of the inverters in that parallel mode. The same as for the output, so the EPS output is also shared, uh, the earth and the, um, the PE is also connected as well, but this is how it's able to operate. So all the inverters are going to work together to cover the load. So whatever the meter or CT clamp detects by your, uh, by your grid connection, whatever load that's detecting, that will come into the master inverter and then it will be calculated how, how much power to be outputting from each of the slaves. So they're all balanced. So if you had, a, if you had four inverters 
uh, and you had a load of uh, two kilowatts, you'd be outputting 500 watts per in per inverter in that case. If you had two inverters and a load of one kilowatt, you'd be outputting 500 watts per inverter. And if you look at my YouTube videos, um, I do a sort of live YouTube short of comparing the master and the slave's load. So they're within a few watts of each other, basically perfectly balanced. You can also have uh, PV going into this, so you don't have to have uh, solar panels on all the inverters. Um, but if you're going to put any any uh, solar on anything, it's best to first max out the master inverter, so inverter 1. So I've added solar panels to my master, and then when that battery is full, it then starts to charge the, the next slave, and it will keep doing that until all the inverters and all the batteries are, are fully charged. You can, of course, spread the arrays out across the inverters. Um, any settings that are configured are configured per inverter. So if you've got any charge uh, windows or any schedules, you have to program each inverter at the moment in order for them to uh, respond. Otherwise, you'll end up with one uh, charging and the other one's not, things like that. So you have to mirror the settings. Um, it was mentioned that in a future firmware update, they'll have the option to be able to set the charge window on just the master and that will then be propagated and mirrored across all of the slaves. I've not found it to be much of a problem though to be honest because I set my charge window uh, is the same every day and I use Home Assistant to automate any additional home automations that I have so I very rarely am I actually changing the charge window charge times or changing the work modes because I have it all automated but if you're looking to scale beyond a single battery stack and inverter and want to go dual inverter I highly recommend the K series or the H1 generation 2 both of those inverters support this parallel mode it works exactly the same on both the K and the H1 gen 2 and you're able to merge all of those um, inverters uh, capacity and power throughput together to serve your home's needs or business's needs. Any questions please comment below. Thank you very much.